Have you ever had one of those customer service experiences where it's like you're gearing up for battle? Like, oh, I can get my money back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't swear, they'll hang up. Okay. <laughs> Available 24 7, answering calls in less than a minute, no scripts. Big deal back then. And this was especially a big deal when everybody was trying to get you away from the phones and trying to maximize time. It was no call limit times. Do you know what happens when you tell people there's no call limit time? What do you think they do? They test it. They test it. Who wants to guess? What do you think the longest call on record is at Zappos? What would you guess? An hour? Three and a half hours? This is her return shoes, mind you. Three and a half. Do I hear four? Four. four. Do I hear five? Five and a half, six. Ten and a half hours. I don't want to talk to my best friend for 10 hours. It was like a filibuster. I think they read from the phone booth the book and described everything in the room. But that story got out. That story of a unique experience and delivering on that brand promise. But it wasn't just these outlandish ones. It really came down to a lot of little ones. So this, this is a scene in any given row at Zappos. Talk about silly. Any room is, is basically like romper room <laughs> there, any row. But these are people who are really not making much above minimum wage, but delivering world-class customer service every day in big ways and little ways because they're empowered. And it really starts with listening, listening. We called it personal emotional connection. How can we hear for the little things beyond their name, what they care about, what they're doing? And people were empowered to do things like Send them flowers if they're having a terrible day. So many cards were written, but really going above and beyond when it came to the service. So for example, a, a woman needed shoes for this wedding that she was going to, couldn't get it on time, even with the overnight shipping. And one of the reps said, I think I can figure out a way to messenger service it there. Or somebody who wanted Jimmy Choo's, we didn't have Jimmy Choo's, so help them find it somewhere else. And all the time listening to the customer and writing these notes on it so that everybody could see all the details about the customer every time to make that difference. And everyone does it. Everyone meaning CEO on down, coders, everybody works the front line of customer service to stay relevant, to keep listening to the customer, to keep being in front of them. And what led to is this, 90% plus NPS scores on 20 thousand calls per day of people not being micromanaged, just creating and delivering an experience of surprise and delight. I'm going to share with you a little bit of the secrets behind that, to create that for any industry. Now, there's all kinds of touch points with service. Right? There's so many, there's so much data. I know so much is going on with AI, all kinds of different documents, but this really goes to the core of what I'm going to tell you. The basics of creating a wow experience that people remember. And behind that is the people. It's the people delivering that wow. And this is the crazy thing. Is this, imagine this, you're sitting yourself this reading through complaints. Complaints, this is the sauce. This is the gold. Because we discovered, you know, I've shared with you some of the anecdotal stories, and there are so many I could go into, but I've limited time. But then there's the data. The data is really interesting because when we compiled it, we found that there's a certain customer lifetime value, an average. And that average is $200. Average customer lifetime value, buying shoes, right? We're not quite saving lives like you guys are. Now, what happens when that customer has a negative experience? A negative experience. It's an opportunity to turn it around. And the data itself showed that the lifetime customer value of a resolved case was two to six times higher. Two to six times higher with a complaint. Something is way worse than a complaining customer. And that's this.
they just go away. They just quietly go away. You don't even know the reason why. They're just all of a sudden with their competitors. We have this phrase, frustration is gold. When we found a frustrated customer, it's like, yes, fantastic. Here's an opportunity to win them back. So as some of you may know, the NPS Loop Net Promoter Score, 0 to 10, how likely are you to promote this? Nines and tens are the promoters, and those detractors speak a lot bigger. But here's the thing. Those detractors, that's a conversion opportunity. It's almost more exciting to have that challenge of somebody upset. And then, of course, those nines and tens are success stories to share, like we heard about Kim here on stage on Monday. And we catalog those stories, and we keep them. And what we would do at Zappos is you should have seen the CRM. I mean, talk about the 90s. Again, gray site, just text, text, text. Didn't need any fancy tech. But we kept the specific notes, not every single thing, but that personal emotional connection notes so that anybody across the company could see it and instantly get that relationship back with the customer. So now I want to share with you what's, what's really behind all this. Because we've talked about surprising and delighting the customer. But behind it, it's the people. We'd have a practice of hiring people who love to be of service, not just having experience with it. They didn't even need experience with it. And hiring people for their full selves. And becoming a top place to work, where we found that if we take care of ourselves, if we take care of each other, then we can take care of the customer.